from Studio 1A in Tampa, Florida, comes a talk show that really feels your pain and tells you like it is. We love America and all that freedom-loving Americans want to protect. Live from coast to coast and on your radio, it's For the People with Keith Allen. We'll help you survive this thing called life with For the People. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, I am Keith Allen and proudly welcoming you to this Monday's edition of For the People on this October the 9th, 2017 on a Columbus Day. And we love, we absolutely love Columbus Day. And I'm looking at a beautiful statue and one that I actually saw quite frequently when I was in New York City, Columbus Circle. If you ever been in Midtown Manhattan, I started my radio career some 30 years ago. Unbelievable. On 57th and 7th Avenue back in 1986. That was like 32 years ago. Sweeping floors, making coffee. That's how I learned talk radio. And I got to tell you, I miss New York. I miss it. I mean, I do I do the show from Florida. I like the palm trees, like the beach, but the uh, the magic in New York City, it's uh, it's a bustling town. And, uh, you know, as they say, if you can make it in New York, you can make it anywhere. And uh, that's true because I've been to a lot of places other than New York. I've uh, grew up in New York, in New Jersey. But, uh, you know, last year's uh, New York City and then uh, D.C. Where else was I? Los Angeles. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, a lot of other cities. Uh, Tampa since 2001. And why Tampa? I know, right? It's gotten bigger. Come on. We got a cheesecake factory here. Uh, it was kind of a funny thing. I was telling a friend the other day. Um, yeah, cheesecake factories are like all over the place now, but not in 2001. Uh, there was one in Rockville, Maryland, and that's where I worked for Clear Channel back then. And uh, they had Dave and Busters and all that stuff. But then when I came to Tampa and moved over here, uh, I was on Boy Scout Road. So if you're familiar with the Bay Area or Tampa Bay, you know where Boy Scout Road is. There was a sign. I, I, I'm not even kidding. It said Cheesecake Factory coming soon. And they were breaking ground for the International Plaza, as we know it now. And I, th- I felt so much better <laughs> as a result. I'm like, okay, Tampa can't be all that bad. But it's, uh, yeah, it's grown. It's grown on me. Uh, it's, it's, it's a neat place because we do have the, the, the oceans, we got the beach, we got, uh, the football, we got hockey, we have baseball. I mean, come on. We got the New York Yankees. All right. We come down. He can't be too bad. Steinbrenner field. I mean, right down the street from me, it's, uh, it's just a special place. And, you know, I tell people there's good places and bad places in every single city, but I have found more good uh, things in the Tampa Bay area. So I call it home It uh, I don't know if this will be, you know, for the rest of my life, kind of home. I kind of always felt that something was going to move me somewhere else eventually in, in, in this career of mine here on radio, but who knows it, uh, it might be the end all be all, uh, here in Tampa, but nevertheless, we're liking it. Dallas Cowboys owner, and maybe you've seen this cause this has definitely gone viral and you got to hand it to Jerry Jones. But I'd like to just listen to uh, what he said and what everybody's quoting him as saying. Let's put it into full perspective here. Jerry Jones, folks. Here he is. We cannot in the NFL uh, in any way uh, give the implication that we uh, tolerate uh, disrespecting the flag. We cannot do that. And uh, uh, I know the vice president uh, did leave because, in his opinion, uh, we, uh, the teams work. We know that there is a serious debate in this country about those issues, but there is no question in my mind uh, that the uh, National Football League and the Dallas Cowboys are going to stand up for the flag. There is no equivocation here. We'll stand for the flag. If there's anything uh, that is disrespectful to the flag, uh, then we will not play. All right. Well, there you go. Uh, more people need to follow suit. And good thing for the vice president to walk off the field. 
Uh, what ha- I think what fans need to do is start doing that, just walking off the field because they're already shutting down the television. They're not watching the TV. There are you know viewership is down big time, but when you you lose the fans in the stands, um, you're going to lose a lot of money. I, this has got to this has got to stop. This is just stupid, but uh, commendable. Yeah, very respectable. You know, more more teams are catching on. I think this will um, go away. Oh, they're making a big deal out of it. Say so there was one that had the fist out. Well, I guarantee Jerry Brown will say. He said he missed it, and I'm sure that that player has been reprimanded with the fist to show that you know he was uh, against what was happening. He'll he'll play ball or he'll be sidelined because that's what he said. Man, more people just need to do this uh, and get on board. I mean, isn't that sound a lot like like Donald Trump? Right? Get the SOBs off the field, right? You're fired. These comments, of course, a lot of people are talking about it. And uh, the comments came after he was asked to make a statement on Vice President Mike Pence's decision to leave Sunday's game between the Indianapolis Colts and San Francisco 49ers after more than 20 San Francisco players knelt during the national anthem. So after Pence left the game, he tweeted, I left today's Colts game because at POTUS, and I will not dignify any event that disrupts our sol- or disrespects rather our soldiers, our flag, our national anthem. That was Vice President Pence. And uh, there you go. Uh, you know, you, you want to do this, folks, do it on your own time. Don't do it on our dime. We, we pay good money, and believe me, it's not cheap when it's all said and done to travel, tailgate. If you don't do that, just the, the beer, the, the, the food, whatever, the concessions, the NFL memorabilia, it's, uh, it's not cheap by any means, but you cheapen, uh, you berate, belittle. It's like peeing on the flag to me, defecating on the flag to me. And that's how it feels for military. I mean, look, uh, you see people that get angry when people burn flags that they'll get burnt themselves to save the flag. It's not the flag itself. It's what it stands for. Some people will just never, ever get it because they don't have virtues or values in their own life. So you try to understand it, try to wrap your mind around it. You got to remember that not everybody is uh, is on the same page in life. Obviously, their north is not your north, and probably good thing. But not everybody's the same. Uh, you know, people say uh, embrace your differences. Ah, uh, that's that's one that I just can't embrace. It's not that's not one that I feel great about. And I would walk out myself if that happened. I paid that money. I'm t- I'm out of here. Um, I respect the military. I have family in military, served military, lost lives and friends lives. I'll never forget John Jackson. Uh, he's been dead for many years, but uh, served in the Korean War. And man, the stories that he used to tell me had tears coming out of his eyes. I'll never forget. It doesn't matter how many years go by, but you could you could you could feel the pain. Uh, you you could see it, and then still today, I could talk to veterans about things that they left behind, friends they had to leave behind, um, some of the guilt that they still hold from decades ago, like many decades, like thirty, forty years ago, that they could have done more. And they did everything they could, according to many of the people they served with. But they just felt like they they could have gave more. They didn't. They wanted to. They felt guilty that they they lived. They came back, and their friends didn't. It's that kind of thing, folks. The least we can do for them is to honor them by standing up 
Dear God. Um, a patriot for sure. Thank you, Mr. Jones, for not having people defecate on the flag, as I put it. Jerry Jones, Dallas Cowboys owner and general manager. Seeing a picture of his thumbs up. Thank you so much. He is a patriot, folks. He's a patriot. Uh, you got to feel sorry for the four, the poor folks in uh, California. I like wine. I'm not a huge wine drinker, but, you know, a great glass of wine. Man, there's nothing like it. But there's fires out there raging. Mandatory evacuations ordered uh, in Simona, Simona County. Uh, located about 75, uh, 75 miles north of San Francisco. Sonoma County Sheriff's Office said that there were multiple fires reported around the county, including a very large fire that jumped a freeway and spread into the east side of Santa Rosa. And s- satellite uh, detecting four wildfires in North Bay, three fires north of Sonoma, Napa Valley Line, while the fourth fire, called the uh, Atlas Fire, burns to the northeast of the city of Napa, red flag warnings remain in effect for strong and dry north winds. And some of these winds, folks, are flaring up. Uh, multiple fires last night as strong winds buffeted the area, as locals called it. Emergency lines were Uh, Initiated with callers reporting uh, smoke in the area prompted officials to ask the public to only use 911 if they see actual uh, unattended flames or having another type of emergency. I mean, it's that out of control. Multiple fires, folks, in Northern California. Um, Some some, a lot of wineries, from what I understand, could be in jeopardy right now. Uh, The winds, they were at 40 plus miles an hour very windy, and then it changed direction and then headed straight down the valley floor. So Napa residents and ranch markets owner uh, Ark Housley uh, was talking about it. Uh, Windsor uh, Fire Chief Jack Panatsky was telling the Associated Press that nearly every one of Sonoma County's fire resources is being used, but they say it's not enough. Uh, Everyone in Sonoma County is spread out fighting these fires, but they don't have enough resources to handle something like this. The only thing we can do is hope the wind will calm down. And there's no immediate information on injuries, though, at this time. Fatalities or nothing like it. Community uh, centers, the Sonoma County fairgrounds, and other local centers have been open for evacuees. And uh, right now, the National Weather Service issued a warning of dangerous conditions that could lead to rapidly spreading wildfires, which goes until early Tuesday. So praying for the people there in Northern California where those conditions are really dry and you get those wildfires, man. And then the wind going straight down the valley. I mean, there's just, I mean, those fires get so hot. We're just, uh, man, there's so many great vineyards. Yeah, Northern California, man, it's beautiful. I used to live on the northern coast for a short time, um, above the grade, as we called it, above San Luis Obispo in Atascadero. Um, I did a, a radio stint out there for a short time. Um, contractual, we just, uh, it didn't work out. Yeah, they, it's not exactly what they promised. <laughs> yeah, one of those deals. And I'm like, before I got even cozier, But I enjoyed that part of California immensely, immensely. It was very, very good. Um, Love Chick-fil-A, folks. Love Chick-fil-A. Anytime opportunity they get around. No, they're not a sponsor, but I hate to hear that this uh, story brought an assailant in with a two-year-old into a bathroom in an Orlando Chick-fil-A after a customer said that he witnessed an attack and he told the police Orlando police said that David Gray, 35, is facing charges of sexual battery of a child. Of course, we know the child was younger than 12, lewd and lascivious battery and molestation. The child was two years old at a stall. A 